This is a Volkswagen CC that supposedly needs a head gasket. This car was purchased on Facebook Marketplace for $1,200. The only thing it said that was wrong was a blown head gasket and the pictures looked like the car was in great shape. Psst, it's not. Whenever you see a car for sale that seems too good to be true, you should ask a lot of questions. And the first one that should be asked in this situation is, are these pictures current? Exhibit A, this hail damaged hood that was not in a single picture. Exhibit B, this hail damaged roof that wasn't in any pictures. Exhibit C is a tail light that has no cover on it. So if you need to change your bulbs, you got quick change bulbs. Later in this video, we're gonna show you more exhibits, but this car was purchased by Devin who works for us for cheap because the head gasket was supposedly blown. We don't think that's the case because head gaskets are very uncommon to go bad in the Volkswagen Audi world. Now, the reason this guy thinks that the head gasket was blown was because it smokes while it's running. It generally only tends to smoke when it gets very hot, meaning you're driving hard or it's under load. But easy way you can tell when a car is running, what's burning is by the smell of the exhaust. And this one smells weird. Generally, when you have a blown head gasket and the coolant is going into the combustion chamber, which is getting burned and coming out the exhaust, you have a very sweet smell coming from the exhaust. More smoke, more sweet smell. That's how you know. The smoke will also be white. Other types of smoke you might see coming from an exhaust will be from oil. You have oil burning in your car that's profusely burning. It's going to be a kind of a bluish smoke. It's gonna smell like burning oil. This smell, is not either of those. This is a very gross smell. Now, another smell that comes from this car is the weed smell that is permeating through everything. And what that also does is prevent you from properly diagnosing a head gasket or making an ad that's even remotely accurate to the condition of the car you're selling. Before we find out if it actually has a blown head gasket, let's go over the exterior of the car and the interior of the car to see what else our gentleman who may have been in a fog when he posted this ad forgot to leave out. This trim right here is pretty common to crack and have issues with delaminating, but our friend here tried to paint it very poorly and he also painted his rear window while he was at it. On the side of our vehicle, all along it, we got hail damage, especially this one. That one's a real nice one right there. We are currently missing a mirror cap. We only, we didn't need that. So maybe the mirror cap was a hail casualty. Now in our interior, this had the fancy Passat seats. These are, these were actually really high end seats for the time. Only like baller edition cars got these. Small tear there, not too big of a deal. A little bit of tearing there, no big deal. Uh, the real feature that's real nice is this headliner. So it's, uh, it's got extra storage capacity inside of it. If you'd like to just store things up there. Now in the rear here, we got our cup holders, but it's, I don't, I don't know what's, the seat's not even connected. The seat's not even in. I don't know what's going on here. I think they were trying to get the seat out and what they did is they destroyed the this. <laughs> Maybe he was finally looking for a place to hide his weed. <laughs> <laughs> this is a more headliner situation. You know, it's a, it's a problem. Now the trunk on this car doesn't open. You'd think it's locked, but it's not locked. Now CCs have a problem where the trunk harness goes bad and then the trunk won't unlock anymore. So this fine gentleman came up with this really great strategy, which is take a rope and tie it to a gas can, which is tied to the emergency release for your trunk. So what you do whenever you need to open your trunk is you, you yank it like this. There's no way that's what he... That's real? <laughs> That's real. That's <laughs> unbelievably real. <laughs> and by the way, it smells like fuel, which means at one point there was gas inside of there. Okay. Now let's take a look under the hood to see how she's doing under there. Mm -hmm. The hood shock is bad. That's unsurprising. It's bent. It's bent. Well, well, Devin bent it so that it would stay up. So he bent it in an effort to try to make it not fall on us. It's still, it's currently falling. Let's just get it. He, there we go, he got it. I don't... <laughs> he got it. Now, a, a brief visual inspection under the hood did not really result in much. It did show me that there is a fresh filter under this hood. Look at that thing, that thing looks brand new. This one that was in the car, just in case, I guess was saved, clearly does not look brand new but we have it just in case we need a really crappy, dirty air filter. 
And if you recently just watched the series that Charles and I did on the Mustang that we're shooting with the Gears and Gasoline Boys, in typical used car fashion, no battery hold down. That's how we do it in the used car world. Before we put this in the lift and go underneath the car, we are gonna scan the faults and see what it has. This first fault is something that we made because we had the oxygen sensor unplugged, so that one's no big deal. EVAP system, gross leak, that's a big one, gross. Coolant fan, difficult movement, so it probably has a cooling fan problem. I'm most curious if you know anything about these cars, you know TSI engines have a lot of timing chain problems. I'm curious what the timing chains look like, so we're gonna do an inspection and find out where they're at. Now, we made a YouTube video showing you how to check timing chain stretch on your car, which we'll link to, or you could have Googled it and you would have checked it already if you were vigilant, but you weren't, so here you are. Let's take a look at our values here, 5.91. You know what that means? Wah, wah, wah. Bad news bears, five is the, is the spec. We are 0.91 out. That's no bueno. This is Jump City right here. This is uh, like the movie Jumper. If, you, if your timing chains are above five, you will need new timing chains. <laughs> That's it. Our shop can do for you. You can bring it to either one of our shops or you could go to our website and purchase timing chains for your vehicle, shopdap.com. Also, buy a Nobody 11 from us. You can scan it and make sure you don't need timing chains, or you do. You probably do. Going up. I say you're not the only one. We're gonna look at all this. It's, this thing is just pouring oil out of the bottom of it. That's number one. So there is oil everywhere here, but the first and most notable thing on this car is right here. This is a coup de gras of, the, of this car. These are ratchet straps. <laughs> ratchet straps, for those who are unaware, would be used for holding down items that you might be traveling with, either on your car, in your trunk, in a trailer. But in this case, it's used for holding in your gas tank. It's a good car. It's a great deal, <laughs> and it's a good car. That, that ad didn't say it's a good car, but it sure took pictures like it was a good car. We think we know where the damage came from for the rear. This radiator is brand new, and obviously this isn't really attached to anything. We think they hit something in the front. The condenser is, is bent right here, and then this was replaced. Probably the intercooler was maybe replaced as well. And then it sent whoo, straight to the back and ripped something open. Under here, there's some scraping on the subframe here a little bit and then it probably just went all the way back and took out like this. There is a repair to the fuel tank right here, right in the front here. So, you know, it's... What is, how, how is... Now, here is really where the problem lies with this car. It's right here. This, take a look here. This is a tire. This is the filler neck for the gas tank. It's literally rubbing on the cover for the filler neck. To say this is a safety hazard is an understatement of the week. That the rubbing on the tire where your gas is, is a major problem. You don't want to do that. When you run a nylon strap on your exhaust, you know, it starts melting to the, uh, to the metal. That's good. Also, somehow this body hole here got ripped open. At some point on this muffler, it melted a hole through a strap. It then fell off, ripped through, and then got pulled back through the tire, which is why this is torn and ripped backwards. Because this is a steel body of a car. Um, the likelihood that you can just, by mistake, tear this like that, just rip the metal, is uh, about zero. Exhaust tip here, aftermarket. Shouldn't be on the market with what they've done here, but this is just uh, like a cheap aluminized pipe that they hack the muffler off and just put this in place. So it's welded. It is welded. Those welds are about as good as my welds would be. So I can't be too critical. <laughs> the axle boot appears to be in good shape. The ball joint also appears to be in good shape. Tie rod ends appear to be in good shape, but the inner does not appear to be in good shape because it has play when you do this. Now, when we go like this, we can check for wheel bearing play up and down. You're gonna rock it like this. No play here. Doesn't mean there's no noise, but 
it does mean that at least there's no play. We can inspect inside of our inside of our boot here. And so what you can do is kind of pop this up and see if the shocks are leaking. So what you'd be looking for would be like oil coming down here. They look okay, so those are good. Now when we look at the tires, they do appear to have tread, actually pretty good tread. But if you look at this inside here, this is worn real bad. Now, probably just had a really bad alignment, possibly related to when they hit something, possibly just from poor maintenance of the car. Alignments are recommended once a year. Nobody does them that often generally, but you know, every year or two, uh, if you don't, you might get wear problems like this where you have a perfectly good tire and then really worn inside. The cords will be coming out of this before you even get close to this tire actually being needs to be replaced. Now the ball joint on the bottom right here isn't worn, but it does have some drive rotting on this boot. So we're gonna have to watch out for that because it could break eventually. Other than that, this side looks pretty good other than some uneven wear on the rotors. It looks like they probably just pad slapped this thing a bunch of times. War rotors are probably pretty old, maybe even original. And uh, the pads have been just slapped new over and over again. On the front here, you can see at the rear of the control arm, this bushing, which is fairly common at uh, this kind of mileage, is starting to crack. Both sides are cracked. This one's worse, uh, not urgent, but something that we would probably recommend if we saw something cracking at our shop. Hey, this is something coming down the road. You should think about looking at this in the future. Now in the rear of this car, there's really not a lot to look at. One thing we did know is there were rear shocks that were leaking. They have oil coming down. They've collected some dirt on top of them. They're bad. They will need to be replaced. What will happen if you have bad rear shocks is you'll hit a bump and your car will kind of continue to bounce down the road. In the rear tires, they have plenty of tread depth, but the inside is worn a little bit more, just like the fronts are, and they have a lot of cupping to it. And what that is, is kind of scalloping to the tire that will make a lot of noise. So if you put this on the front of your car, it's gonna make a ton of noise. It sounds like a bad wheel bearing. It's really just bad tires. Now, another thing that came from the accident probably is the rear fender liner is missing. Look at all that, no protection. A lot of things with this car make us think that the head gasket is not bad. Devin, who bought this car and knows a thing or two about cars, thinks that this is a potentially a clogged cat. So we are gonna take the cat off, or actually he's gonna take the cat off, and we're gonna inspect what it looks like inside of there. I don't think it is. Uh-oh. Based on our very thorough testing, it doesn't appear as though the cat is clogged. Okay, so we are gonna pull this boost pipe. It's pretty common for turbo cars to have oil in the hoses and stuff like that, but it depends on how much. So if there's copious amounts of oil in here, we know we might have a problem with the turbo. So let's have a look. Sorry, I'm gonna block. So there is gonna be oil. The question is how much oil? That's like nothing. Oh, that one's got some more. That's not too bad though. Because we didn't find anything there, we're gonna do a leak down test on the engine. This forces pressurized air into the cylinder. It will then determine how much is being forced in and then how much it actually is leaking down. That will determine if this thing is leaking. And we should hear it coming through the coolant if it's leaking into the cylinder. So here we go. It looks pretty darn good to me. That's about as good as you can get in terms of leak down. We've tested all cylinders. None of them are leaking. I believe it's safe to say we have eliminated the head gasket as the problem. So after looking at this car, what it seems like is this car is just burning oil. And the reason why it smelled weird, let me show you why. Inside of this car, we found this. And this is super tech oil. Apparently this is sold at like Walmart. Now it's just oil. Maybe it's not great quality or whatever, but um, what happened is we looked at it and we smelled it. And this smells like the weirdest smelling oil I've ever smelled in my life. It almost has like a sweetness to it. It's, it is bizarre. I have never smelled oil like this. It's a very odd scent. So what I'm wondering is, if this thing is just burning a lot of oil and because they're using the old super tech, uh, it smells really funny to us. So that leads me to think we have a pretty good solution here. I'm confident that we either have an issue with the PCV or the turbo. Uh, a 200,000 mile turbo is very likely to burn oil. A 
200,000 mile PCV is also likely to be bad. One of these two is gonna solve our problem, which means Devin, while he didn't luck out with pretty much the entire rest of the car, he did luck out that he doesn't need a head gasket.